Well, now, 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 looking at this, this very thick report, and, and Nichols, may I congratulate you on the, the thickness of this report? <laughs> Uh, I, I'm very pleased, but there are uh, a couple of things that do concern me. I notice that this product uh, rates very well with women 18 to 30. <laughs> and does quite nicely with children uh, 12 to 17. <laughs> but unfortunately does rather poorly with both men and women aged 80 to 100. You didn't, did now, you? I, I, I don't think know what you're talking about. You did, didn't you? Danny! Sir? Nichols, what the hell is going on? Sir, I'm sorry, but, well... I have reason to believe that Nichols wrote this report while naked. I did not. You did too. He once sent me email while on the toilet. Nichols, is this true? Of course not. Why would I do such a thing? I can't imagine. Look, let's just let's just move along. But Nichols, no more giggling. All right? Okay. Now then, on uh, on page uh, one hundred and two. Uh, there is a, a very disturbing trend. Nichols, are you getting an erection? No! Oh, damn it, you did write this thing naked! All right, come on, let, let, let's, let's just push on, all right? Look, all right. now on page 102, there's, there's a, a very disturbing trend here. Sir? Uh, Sir? Uh, I, I just can't. I keep picturing him naked, it's just too creepy. <laughs> I know. Look, Nichols, is there any part of this thing you didn't write completely naked? Perhaps you were wearing socks or a single mitten? <laughs> All right, well... Well, we'll just have to redo the whole damn thing. Danny, I'm afraid you're gonna have to take this one, and I'm sorry, but you've only got a week. Oh, but... Oh. <sighs> so let's just move on to some other business, shall we? Naked! Out, 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 Nichols! Out of here! Out of here! Oh, just get out of here! Oh, my God! All the labors of some poor Colombian boy tainted by your perversion! Just go! Go! I'm sorry, everybody. Bingo, could you get us a fresh pot of coffee, please? Thanks. How can I help you, sir? Oh, please, please, please don't shut off my cable. It's all I got, ain't that, and the smokes, and I already cut them down to two packs a day. Can I have your name, please, sir? Look, 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 please don't cut off my cable. I've been thinking about it. It's all I got, that and the smokes. You know, I think if you cut off my cable, I'd probably die. We don't want that, do we, sir? Oh. Um, did you bring your cable bill with you? Oh, no, no, I burned it. It depressed me. <laughs> What's your name? Look, 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 look. Just take this, okay? It's all I got anymore, that damn GST, eh? Sir, um, I, I, I can't take this until we know how much you owe us. I need your name. Do you understand? Okay. 
Billy Bix, I'm a war hero. That's the Korean War. I killed four Korean gentlemen, but there is nothing personal about it. It's what I was sent over to do. Okay, here it is, sir. Billy Bix, you owe us 61.40. Yes. Oh, please, please, don't shut off my cable. Look, 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 look. On Wednesday, there's a documentary on bugs, eh? I can't tell you how much I've been looking forward to that. I got a funny feeling that if I miss this one, I'm gonna die. And I'll leave my invalid wife to take care of herself, except she can't, weighs almost 400 pounds. If you shut off my cable, she might get up. All right. Do you know how to cook a roast? A roast? A roast. I'm thinking of cooking one, Sip. They don't know how to, eh? No, I don't. How am I doing there? Sir, um, there can't be more than $15 here. I'm sorry. It's not enough. Please, please, please don't shut off my cable. Sir, you've left us no choice. Well, is that how you get your, your jollies here at the cable company, eh? Cutting off the cable of Korean War veterans? Is that how you get your kinky sex jollies? No, it is not, sir. You just don't have enough money, okay? Well, couldn't you just turn a blind eye? Oh, please, please, please. Sir, I would love to, but uh, you see that camera right there? That's head office. If I cheat for you, I lose my job. Do you understand? Uh, no. Hello? Oh, yes. Certainly, I understand. Okay. Okay, sir, you're off the hook. We'll take this as a deposit. Oh, oh, God bless you. God bless your soul. Whoever you are. <laughs> oh, God, my poor heart. Everything's going so fast, eh? You got a smoke? I don't smoke. You don't smoke? And I've just got the two. <laughs> oh, I better get home. Oh, I better get home. for you this fine morning. I've had a bit of terrible news. Oh, terrible news is horrible. Yes, well, someone stole my gazebo. Jeez, that's too bad, eh? And what complicates the matter even further is that there is a gazebo, which I've never seen before, sitting in your backyard. Yes, Mrs. Larson. You see, we'd always admired your gazebo from afar, right? So we went out and bought one very similar to yours. We did. Talk is cheap. Let's just steal that ugly thing. Yeah, let's do her. <laughs> Easy. <laughs> hey, watch it! Come on, this is fast. So you didn't steal my gazebo? Mrs. Larson, I'm outraged. I mean, we don't have to stand here in our underwear and listen to this. Yeah, we don't have to stand and talk to some unneighborly bony old broad. Uh. Bony. Good afternoon, sirs. My name is Officer Henderson. This is my partner. My partner is parking the car. We'd like to ask you a few questions. Uh, is this about our high school transcript, sir? Yeah, how many times do we have to explain that they were lost in a flash flood? 
No, this is about your gazebo. Oh. The gazebo. That's because we have long hair. Yeah, because we're not captains of industry. No, because you got a gazebo in your backyard. Now, where'd you get it? From a guy. What guy? Can we even get dressed? Hey, I said what guy? Mr. Herm. Me. Tiao. Wish. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Hermit Tiao Wish live. Good morning, sir. Good morning, Mr. Hermitiowish. What? Uh, sir, did you uh, sell either of these gentlemen anything? No, no, no. Sir, maybe you don't recognize us because we're not in our suits today, eh? The gazebo? Yes. Yes, I, I did sell these gentlemen a, a gazebo because I'm Mr. Hermit ish. Okay. I'm afraid their story checks out, ma'am. Super fine. But it's my gazebo. Hey, not in the eyes of the law. Need to ask you a few more questions. Is it about the gazebo again? Yes. I'm afraid your gazebo's been involved in a homicide. <laughs> it looks as though she was trying to steal it, but then it crushed her. You know, it just goes to show you that in this society, the people who look so-called normal are quite often the real freaks. True. Yeah. Yeah. Let this be a lesson to all old people everywhere. Well, we'll have your gazebo cleaned and uh, stuff off the road. The other night, I had a dream that we'd made the Kids in the Hall show in L.A. instead of Toronto. We were all rehearsing at our huge, beautiful, state-of-the-art studio in Century City. Mark and Lauren Michaels were arguing over a catchphrase for the chicken lady. Mark thought that the phrase should be, I would really love to have an egg immediately. But Lauren said that that was too many words for a t-shirt. So he suggested, gotta get laid. <laughs> Mark loved it and immediately told his lawyer to write it up. I was, uh, meanwhile, in the corner studying my lines for the next scene. Or maybe I was doing lines. Anyways, <laughs> I was having a very difficult time remembering my next line or remembering if I had just done one. My assistant kept saying, you've just done one. And I kept saying, no, I don't think that's the next line. And then I would do another line. <laughs> then, Bruce's personal trainer, body by Jake, who was also our director, came bursting in, flushed with endorphins from a morning workout to announce that Cher did not have a seat for the studio taping. Well, the entire day's rehearsal was cancelled and Bruce scurried off to call a press conference. Just at that moment, Kevin and Dave came in. They'd been missing for three days. Uh, apparently, they'd been doing a commercial in Hawaii. 
Simon and Hecubus for Nissan. <laughs> the next thing I remember, the five of us were at the Anaheim Pond, playing a benefit hockey game against the Mighty Ducks. <laughs> the stands were filled with celebrities and their trainers, cheering and doing lines. <laughs> Everybody was wearing a red ribbon, except me and Don Cherry. <laughs> Now, the game was taking an awful long time to conclude, so I thought I would hurry things up by scoring on my own goal, thereby winning the game for the Mighty Ducks. Then, one of the Mighty Ducks picked me up on his shoulders and carried me triumphantly about the rink, while all the other celebrities cheered. Then, the Mighty Duck took off his helmet, and it was Mike Myers. He said, Bada, I said, Voklemt, and we laughed our heads off. <laughs> the next thing I remember, I was accepting an Oscar, and the only person I thanked was Tom Hanks. <laughs> and when I got home, there was an angry message on my answering machine from my Coke dealer, chastising me for not acknowledging him. <laughs> I didn't care. I cut the phone lines, did a line, popped a Xanax, and fell asleep. <laughs> And when I woke up the next morning, I was still in Toronto, and I realized that it was all just a drug-induced dream, and I felt sad. So I did another line. And I felt sad. So I did another line. My friend Carlo is a brilliant scientist, and it is a social tragedy that he has never been employed as such. So it is for him and the 575 an hour that I have agreed to help him with his latest experiment. We will now measure your energy field. Stand, please. Fascinating stuff. A lot of this technical jargon is beyond me, and Carlo is too consumed by his pursuit of excellence to explain. But basically, the idea is that I'm to be submitted to various stimuli, and then the energy around my toes is to be measured. Ah, Carlo, I'm curious. Do you select your stimuli from a scientifically approved list of stimuli, or do Shh. Sorry, Carlo. As a control or placebo, my cousin Neve has volunteered to be measured without stimuli during the course of the week. Neve and I are forbidden to speak to each other on account of the potential contamination of our fields of energy. The stimuli I'm subjected to are wide-ranging and ingenious in their variety. So far, so good. Uh, cheese, um, Rockford? Uh, garlic, definitely. Pass, sorry. More puke? Something wrong with me because I still see puke. <laughs> ah, now that's definitely a terrier. Taxi? Uh, air freshener! Air freshener? <laughs> Trophy! Unfortunately, by midweek, the much sought after energy fields have failed to materialize. However, in science, this is where they separate the men from the boys and Carlo's experiments become more rigorous. Come. Can I now try out our out task? Please, 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 
Some of the stimuli are not exactly my cup of tea, but as hard as they are on me, the strain seems to be taking its toll on Carlo the worst. I'm worried that he might be cracking up under the pressure. Despite his best efforts, our toes are as stingy as Scrooge with those energy fluctuations. I begin to feel guilty that maybe my toes are the problem. Surprisingly, though, it's Cousin Neve who snaps. Sadly, the experiment is called off, yes, and its potential have. remains unanalyzed. We're going to be <laughs> Though of late, I have been having the strangest dreams. I dream that my toes have this incredible energy attached to them. And although I can't seem to control it, I know in my dream state that the energy coming from my toes is a force for good. So I say, how about it, science? Okay, let me have that garden. 